Hello everybody, welcome to Snyder's Inc. And today, we got a video from a channel called Dr. Insanity. And this is, a fake cop realizes he's being arrested. We're gonna see what this is about. Ladies and gentlemen, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, comment what you think down below. Let's go. Cops are supposed to be here to protect us. But what happens when criminals pretend to be the cops to abuse their power? In this video, we'll cover three examples of this. Starting with Jackson Jones, who was pulled over after cops received reports of a strange police officer aggressively questioning random people around town. Do you have any weapons in the car or anything like that? Like a gun or anything? I'm not sure. I don't even have a lot. Okay. I'm 19 to go at this gun car from the truck over there. I'm just going to take out the vest. Man, I'm from Tennessee. So, okay. why are you wearing the vest? Well, like I said, I drove from all the way from Tennessee. Jones says he's from Tennessee. What does that do with a vest? Why does that give you the right to... Do? Is that the sort of thing that Tennessee people do? Tennessee people just put on vests and just start driving. That's not what they do. Over 500 kilometers away from where he was pulled over in Oklahoma. So it's strange that he's still got on all his police gear, especially given he's off-duty. Right? That's what I'm saying. He goes, I just drove all the way to Texas. I was like, that doesn't mean you should be wearing your police shit. Police officers take that shit off. They don't keep wearing that shit. And the cops think so too. Why do you wear a vest outside of the facility? Is this a I mean, vehicle or is this your personal vehicle? This is my field. It's just a little odd because whenever I worked in the jail, I took my crap off, especially if I was taking a long drive really, from Tennessee. Nice. You got any kind of employment identification? Uh, dude, they don't give me that when you work at the jail. Really? You don't have like an access card or an ID badge or anything for the facility that you work at? I, I don't. When Jones fails to produce any... Oh, my man, that you are... That you just got fucked up there. This man says he. This man, the cops know what you that you do get ID or some you get some type of ID when you work out of jail because you have to be able to get into the jail and get out of it. Any form of certification that proves he works in law enforcement, the cops start to get extremely suspicious. Not only was he wearing a police uniform, but he was also pulling civilians over and aggressively questioning them. The cops know something is up with this guy. They just need to figure out what he's doing, and more importantly, why. And you don't have a gun with you or anything like that? I, I, I don't. You can search the car. I don't. You don't mind if I search the car? I don't think it's the Okay, cool. Step on out if you don't mind. <laughs> Face the vehicle, I'll just check you for, make sure you don't have any guns or nothing. As Jones steps out of the car, we can see that he is in full police uniform, complete with handcuffs. Even if Jones was a jail worker in Tennessee, as he claims, he doesn't have jurisdiction to arrest people in public. All this no, he doesn't have arrest. He doesn't have authority to fuck anything outside of the fucking jail. Like he has no authority inside, like outside of the jail. Once he steps out of jail, his authority is gone. He has none. So yeah, he should absolutely not be wearing this. You should not have this on. The signs point to something being seriously wrong here. So, given he's been granted permission by Jones, the officer decides to conduct a full search of the vehicle. We'll just check everything out. If everything's good, then we'll we'll go on. One empty bottle, one partially missing bottle, and then two more to go. And he, it was a pack of six. Just all kinds of red flags, man. I would not drive from Tennessee with a vest carrier on. No. Or even a duty belt on. As soon as I get off, I take that shit off. Yeah. Just, I'm tired of being in it. I hate get driving out. from Top Golf to my house with this shit on. <laughs> I was like, I wouldn't be driving with Tessie. He's like, nah, man, when I get done, I'm taking this shit off. I hate having it on. <laughs> I was like, I wouldn't even drive a top golf to my house with this shit on. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That is amazing. 
The officer took Jones to his patrol vehicle while he finished off the search, and Jones would take this opportunity to further prove how delusional he really is. Why don't we go have a seat in my Tahoe? Huh? I have a seat in my Tahoe. No, back seat. Asking whether he can sit in the front seat seems to prove that he fully believes these cops are nothing but his friends and co-workers, backed up by the fact that he's wearing a thin blue line hoodie, a sort of cop pride symbol that shows how connected Jones feels to his position in law enforcement. But then the officers ask to talk to his supervisor, something that would easily confirm whether or not Jones is who he says he is. Of course he can't do that because he's not a cop, so he doesn't have a supervisor. He doesn't have someone to, 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 to you can call. He doesn't have someone you can talk to at all. But it doesn't go quite as expected. Where'd you get the vest carrier from? Did you order it online? No. From a friend? Or? I didn't get it. Bought it at a store? Uh, it's a police store from there in Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh, okay. You can only be law enforcement to get it. I, I bought it like four months ago. You can take all this stuff. Okay. I mean, that's, I don't care. I mean, I bought all this stuff. None of that stuff was given to the account. Give me a phone back. Like I said, I'm not going to see uh, DPS. Alright. Cool. Uh, 423 494. Yes, this is definitely Mike Hansen. Oh my god, who is this he called? I want to know. Who is this calling? Who is he calling? Please tell me there's some dude. Please tell me this is like a family member. Please tell me there's like a family member with this dude. Who is this dude? I wanna... I wanna... Like the Oklahoma County Sheriff's Office. I'm out on a individual saying he works for uh, Campbell County by the name of... Give me a call back. 405-869. So it went to a voicemail, so that's like not an official work number. The number that Jones gave was fake, or at least not belonging to an official police department. Jones was either hoping that they... He gave a fake number. What was it supposed to do? Was he hoping someone would answer? What if what happened if someone answered that? I want to know whose phone number was that he gave. They'd give him the benefit of the doubt when it hit voicemail, or that he could convince someone to call them back and pretend to be his supervisor. Either way, it didn't work. And the final nail on the coffin was when the witness he pulled over turned up to the scene and completely exposed his story. He was dressed like a cop. They had sheriff written on the side right here. He was sitting in a driveway, and uh, I was standing about 10 minutes just staring at him. And I'm like, what the heck is this guy? It's kind of odd. He's in, in, in our neighbor's driveway. He gets out, and I said, can I help you, sir? He's like, well, uh, I was wondering, what, what was your problem? You were staring at me over in the, in the driveway. And I said, yeah, I was kind of curious who you were. I lived down the road. I was kind of seeing what's going on. He goes, I'm a, I'm a uh, undercover cop for Wellston. Well, I got a call. I got to let you go. And then he left. And then when he left, he came towards uh, the turnpike bridge, and he took the Yui, and was trying to pull another car, and he started flashing his lights at him. Really? And I, I didn't know if, if they pulled over or not, but he just flashed his lights like he was trying to pull them over. Not only did the witness attest that Jones seemed to be unlawfully pulling over anybody that came into view, but he also told the officer that Jones claimed to be an officer out of Wellston, a town in Oklahoma. A far cry from Knoxville, where he told the cops he worked. As far as the officers were concerned, that was reason enough to bring him in, and they immediately went back to the control vehicle to arrest him. Yeah, I know. All right, turn around, face the other way. Put your hands behind your back. You're under arrest for impersonating law enforcement, all right? And then you also have a charge for transporting an open container. The penalty for impersonating a police officer is between one and three years jail time, and he'll likely be facing a. That is insane. Why would you... In, okay. Why would you impersonate a police officer? Why would you do that? Why would you impersonate a police officer for? What benefits do you get from that? What power do you think you get from that? You don't get the power you think you do from it. I can tell you that for sure. You will get exposed pretty damn quickly. 
small fine from the open container charge as well. But most importantly, Jones is now off the street. The only reason someone like him would ever impersonate a police officer is simply because they enjoy the position of power and authority it gives them. If someone is willing to lie in such a brazen way to obtain that power, who knows what they're willing to do with that power. And that... That's it. That's a good point. Like, it's usually about power, but like... The fucking dangerous game you're playing. Because you could have... If you are power... You could easily get exposed quickly. You get exposed very damn quickly. Was exactly the problem police found with Daniel Nelson. Police found him next to a fully outfitted vehicle that heavily resembled a cop car, complete with lights and emblems claiming that it was in fact a local police vehicle. Nelson claims that he patrols as a police officer for a church helping out homeless people by checking on them and ensuring they're not in danger. But the cops felt as though something was off. This guy's on. This guy's on. He gave me his card, but see if you can try and grab a VIN on it for me while I'm talking to him. He works for a church. There's no plate on it. I just noticed. I mean, I noticed before after you talked to me that there was no plate on it, but he's got a dog in there. Just be aware. If y'all here, something happened. Oh, I'm That's here on a separate entity. I'm not a part of that. Oh, uh, but something happened. You say you, it's a dude. Uh, yeah, different. I'm here for something else, probably. Yeah, yeah. but I'm just they're, saying. They're, they're their own. Life. Nelson says that he was called out to look for a homeless person that was possibly in crisis. But after talking to the guy, he decides that everything's fine and heads out. But before he goes, the cop asks for his date of birth, claiming they just want his information to take down for their list of local officers, not from the official police department. In reality, though, the cops used his name and date of birth to run his information and find his address so they could investigate further the next day. Yeah. Hey, no one here. I'm gonna check. I could hear him in there talking to his dogs. Despite the fact that nobody answered the door, the fake police car was outside the house, the dogs were home, and they could hear him inside talking to the dogs. Above all that, it was 6 in the morning. The cops were almost 100% certain Nelson was inside, but refused to answer to the cops. However, the police definitely didn't expect what happened next. Later that day, Nelson turned himself in at the police station. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you have the right to stop the questioning and remain silent at any time you wish. And the right. Interesting that he turned himself in. Yeah, I wouldn't have seen that coming. I guess he's like, well, my my time is um, my time is up here. Like they they kind of figured me out, so I best do a uh, go. Better just turn myself in so I don't get more charges added on. You have to ask for it. have a lawyer at any time you wish, including during the questioning. Do you understand each of these rights? Yeah. Say yes. Yes. What followed was a 20-minute interrogation where Nelson seemed completely delusional. At no point did he ever seem to accept that what he was doing was against the law. And whenever he was met with an issue, he responded by saying he was a man of God and working in his name. Never once in 10 years have I associated myself with being a police officer. It's never changed. Never. I'm just telling you, our witness says you did it at least twice. Twice? You identified you yourself as a police officer twice, twice while you were talking to him. He said you identified yourself, and that's the only reason he stopped to speak with you. So at this point, he said he felt it was odd that you would stop him while walking. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. Right, but why would you stop to talk to somebody at 3 in the morning? Because he matched the description of somebody I was in. Backpack, same everything I told you. Yeah, you told me it was a white subject that was your kind of... I've never once in my entire career... This is actual delusion. This is an actual delusional man. This is a man who believes that he is in the right. He believes he's doing everyone's work for them and he should be set free. There shouldn't be any problems with what he's doing. He does not see the crime he's committing at all. We are doing this for a decade. Devoted to God. Have ever made that statement. Okay. This is the story Nelson maintained throughout the entire interrogation. That he's worked for God and the church, and he's just there to help people. But obviously, with the witness statement and patrol vehicle rigged with sirens and lights, 
The police weren't believing a word. Yeah. But that raises a different question. If Nelson wasn't out there trying to protect these people at 3 a.m., what was he doing talking to them? It's probably for the best that he'll be spending at least a year behind bars in the Wisconsin State Prison. These last two suspects have been so caught up in their fantasies that they impersonated officers with absolutely no prior experience as one. But the case is different for Jaredson Mackey, a man that had been fired from the force but took matters into his own hands. That's some serial killer shit, that sounds like. They got five, but I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna handle my shit. I'm gonna handle the law in my hands. They don't want me to do it that way, I'm gonna do it my way. I'm gonna show about how the law works. Hey, partner. Hi. Hey, I'm Officer Park with the Ackworth Police Department. How are you? Uh, the only reason why I'm pulling you over, I guess y'all were, well, that's my chief of police right there. He saw y'all go around traffic. He was trying to figure out who, who y'all are with or what was going on. The cops had seen Mackie flash his lights and go around traffic, something that real cops aren't allowed to do, let alone those in suspicious looking vehicles that aren't even registered with the police force. Yeah, I work, I'm off to the hero operator. Oh, off to the hero operator? How you doing, Chief? Hey. I was, I'm off to the operator. I just working off. Really, killed. Yeah. That's my ID. Uh -huh. That's my badge. Why is the car registered to an individual? That's mine. This is my company. So what are you doing with all these red lights? Sorry? Why all this emergency lights? Good. And did I see you use an emergency light to pull out into traffic on Lake Ackworth Drive? Oh, no, because I couldn't, I couldn't get to the chief. You know this? That's a standstill. So I flashed the lights looking to see me, but I was trying to get in the line. Who do you work for? This is my company. I'm an off-roading hero operator. This is my company. She look like me, you're impersonating a police officer. Oh, uh, no, sir, I'm not impersonating. So. Mackie claims that he's an off-duty hero, or highway emergency response operator, whose job is to clear the roads and ensure normal traffic flow is restored around accidents. However, his vehicle should be registered to the Georgia Department of Transportation instead of himself, so... Red flags are immediately raised to the police chief, especially when he hears that he was weak. Yeah, that's a smart... That's a, uh... Police chief smart immediately knew. You saw him immediately have red flags. He didn't immediately just go with it. Yeah, some red flags are there. Eating through traffic while off duty. ID on you? Yes, sir. We look in the front. We look in the yeah. front. Yes, I see red lights. I saw red lights when you pulled out. Yeah, that's right. That's when it activated to the back. Yeah. Where's your ID? Right, yes, chief. Do you have a Do you have a lighting permit for the vehicle? Yeah, right down the glass. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Be right back with you, okay? Here's your ID back. Thank you. Look, um, given with all the light and permit and stuff that I'm seeing, I'm just going to assume everything's properly permitted and stuff for the vehicle. It is, sir. Uh, that said, with what my chief's observation, you know, the use of those are for strictly business purposes. You, no, can't, right. you can't be using it to pull in the traffic, okay? Yes, sir. So I am going to issue a citation for unlawful operation for emergency vehicle, okay? I want to verify your employment. And I'm probably going to have CID look into it, to be honest with you, to see what you're doing. I, I, don't, I, know, Chief, I don't feel good. Chief, of course, Chief I, can show you, I can show you my LLC. I can show you my LLC right now. I'll let, I'll let them handle it. Mackie was given a citation for unlawful operation of an emergency vehicle and let go for the time being. But when the officers returned back to the station and contacted the GDOT, they discovered that Mackie was a hero operator, but had been terminated from them in January six months earlier. He had kept his back. So he was a hero operator, but been fired six months earlier. And instead was just using the car to go about his business and just do whatever the hell he wanted imagine permits and knew exactly what to say to the officers for them to believe that he was well within his rights to operate his vehicle. But luckily, these cops were too smart to get caught out, and Mackie was arrested for impersonating a police officer two days later. If you enjoy true- That is insane. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think of these videos down in the comment section. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see y'all for the next one.